everyone. We're coming to our next panel um, in cooperation with Sound Diplomacy. Under 30s, the music industry of the future, which you can see on the stage. And um, the panel is moderated by uh, Anton Teichmann from Sound Diplomacy, and he's going to introduce the rest of the panelists. Uh, yes. Hello. Thanks, everyone, for being here. And uh, yes, uh, my name is Anton Teichmann. I work for Sound Diplomacy, which is a music expert research and event production agency based in three cities, uh, London, ba Barcelona, and Berlin. I work for the Berlin office. And um, okay, I'll just start with the group. That's Liz. Hello, uh, I'm Liz Stokes. I'm the editor of a music industry publication in the UK called Record of the Day. Um, we send out a daily email and a weekly magazine covering all the music business stories. We also feature music every day, so like a track that we're going to champion. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, then Fabian. Hi, uh, my name is started, uh, I was in advertising for five years, then I started a design studio called Cheesecake, where we did some uh, record covers and music videos, and uh, one of my partner is now full-time uh, music video director, and um, the other partner and me, we started a new uh, design studio where we focus a bit more on tech startups, and we help with design, strategy, and code. And Jen? Hi, I'm Jen. Um, I work at Indigo. It's a music distribution company. I work at the digital department, running content marketing, um, account management. On the side, I run a music website called thebomberjacket.com, and we do um, booking and promotion with artists in New York and um, Paris and Germany. And then Annika. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Annika. I'm booking Dogville and Spectrum Festival in Hamburg, and I'm also um, responsible for the uh, Artville um, and all the events about that, so that's what I'm doing. All right, uh, and then before we start uh, talking or telling more about ourselves, I was just wondering, are there many people here that are new in the music business or are about to start? Maybe raise your hands or not? Uh, yeah, just uh, feel free to ask questions, or maybe just, yeah, think about something you want to know and then uh, later we can yeah, you can just ask the questions and maybe we can answer that. Uh, I guess we'll just start uh, talking about uh, how we uh, got involved in the music industry, um, how, what career path we chose and why, and um, how we got to start in the, in the field. I guess yeah. we'll just do the same okay. then. Um, so I was one of those people that always knew what I wanted to do. Um, I grew up wanting to be a journalist. I was a nosy child. I wanted to know everyone else's business constantly. So I always knew that that was what I was going to do. I was also brought up by two parents that went through the sort of hippie love generation in the UK and were really into their music. Uh, it was always a part of my life. So I just decided to marry the two things that I loved and, and go forward with it. Um, I did a degree in journalism in London. Uh, I interned. I worked for magazines for free. And yeah, and then eventually it all, it all came good. One of the things actually that I forgot to mention originally is that I also run a networking event for 18 to 25 year olds who want to get into the music industry. So from my experiences, we took that and we put that together for the next generation. All right. Uh, I met my partner at a, the, the advertising agency and um, we shared, well, and we said, okay, let's start our own business. And uh, we shared an office with the guys from Easy Does It, is a film and photo production. And um, I don't know, by accident, we got some jobs uh, from the music industry, from Four Music and Sony, did the first uh, record covers. Um, Easy Does It shot the uh, Materia Lila Wolken video. And from there on, uh, yeah, we got more jobs and, um, is, is developing quite good. <laughs> but what made you start working in this field? What was your initial um, Yeah, the, the problem is with um, when you work for people who are, like, I don't know, much older than you and uh, who are a bit afraid of the whole uh, technology um, change. And, um, you know, they 
they have more to lose than to gain and they try to stabilize the situation and they don't really embrace change. And um, in our case, for example, the guys from Easy Desert, they are also, I think most of them are under 30 and they never experience um, shooting with big production uh, budget like 500K and they are just, I don't know, doers and they just uh, shot the first music videos and uh, that's how it goes. <laughs> uh, because I think at the end you, you need the right people and you need to build your own ecosystem in terms of the people you want to work with and the people you want to work for. Um, hopefully they have uh, also the money to pay you. And um, at the end... Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Jen, yeah, what, how did you start in the music business and what... Uh, how did you get your job at Indigo and uh, why did you start and tell us? Um, things started for me, uh, I also knew pretty young what I wanted to do um, and I grew up in a really small town in Pennsylvania and I wasn't really happy with the music selection there and a friend gave me a mixtape with some songs that really opened things up for me like original, like really old Arcade Fire songs, Sufjan Stevens, like first recordings, like a bunch of random stuff that I could never find in my hometown. Um, and I was like, wow, I can't find this music anywhere in my town, so I'm just gonna start bringing it to people. So I started a radio show. Um, so radio and music journalism was actually my start uh, in music, and I did music journalism first. Um, and then I booked a concert when I was 16 in my hometown. That was kind of just like my first, uh, I don't know, I, I was like all DIY stuff, but that was my first exper experience and exposure. Um, and then from there, I just continued with music journalism and I got to know people through my journalism experiences, like bands and, and labels. And um, that was a really, really helpful way to like, oh, I'm interviewing you. Well, let's talk about other things you're doing or did you know about this and this thing this label's doing? Um, and I just met different people. I worked at a label and then met uh, through the National, uh, their label in New York. like. I, I interned for them and just started working for them and through that I heard out about this digital distribution job in New York and through that um, I heard about Indigo's job and I applied for this job in Germany and luckily I got it. But it, it was really just like a getting to know people thing, putting myself out there and not being afraid to put yourself out there, really, really important, so. Okay, and then Annika, I know I think you have a little different, uh, you made a little different career, but tell us about that. So uh, I was one of the people who didn't know who didn't know what to do and uh, just was interested in music when I was uh, 15. So I started listening to music uh, really a lot and um, I was going to concerts and then I discovered Dogville, which was, which was first in 2007 and uh, I haven't been there. And um, in 2008, I really liked the lineup and so I thought about, hmm, well, I will go there. And I was um, just writing some tips on there, my about some recommendations on there uh, MySpace page, and then one of the CEOs um, got in touch with me, and so I started writing with him and uh, like writing about music. And then I got him, I got to meet him, and um, so it started like this. Okay, yeah, as for me, uh, I also didn't really know what to do, and uh, I've always liked music, I've always listened to music, and went to a lot of shows, uh, started playing in some bands, but not really good ones, but all my friends kind of kept doing that and um, a lot of them actually worked together or were assigned to this Berlin-based label Zinbus that I also really liked at that time and um, when I really didn't know what to do I just asked them if uh, they need an intern or something and uh, they said yes and I started working for them, did some stuff and just through that job got to know more and more people in Berlin met some great friends and from there I think everything just kind of happened. I, uh, a friend of mine told me about this job at uh, Initiative Musik which is a German music fund who also does some music export things and uh, they told me about a job that opened up um, this German presentation at the South by Southwest festival in Austin. I actually didn't believe that I would get this job but then it happened, which was great. I did that for two years, and then through friends, I worked at the Iceland Aries Festival, 
And that's where I met Thomas More, who then asked me to work for him. So I worked for More Music. And then my old colleague at Initiative Musik started working for Sound Diplomacy and just recently asked me to join her company. So I did, but I also, at, on the side, I started booking some bands, doing small shows, uh, all on like a more DIY level. Uh, yeah, I also manage some bands and I will start a new record label together with the help of uh, more music. But um, I think there was no initial plan behind it, uh, so, but it just kind of happened and I'm yeah, quite happy the way it worked out. I don't, I don't even sometimes know why or how, <laughs> but it just, yeah, I guess it just happened. Um, I think it's really important um, to do stuff and to meet people and put stuff out there so people, I don't know, recognize you or your work and then this leads to more uh, hopefully good work um, but if you are the I think if you're just this guy who's doing everything perfect uh, in the company and executing very good I, I don't then you stick to be that guy who's doing the stuff perfectly but you're not the guy I don't know who has a different point of view on, on doing stuff and um, then I don't know that's how you yeah yeah for me I guess this network thing, expanding my network was, was absolutely crucial. Uh, I don't think I would have gotten most of the jobs without knowing these like really wonderful people who always helped me. That, that's exactly one of the reasons why we set up the Young Guns Network, the thing that I mentioned before. Because we just thought, these people that have these ideas, they need to come together. And networking is such a massive part of the music industry, no matter what part of it you work in, whether it's a label, whether it's an agent, meeting other people with the same ideas or ideas that relate to yours and coming together and actually just doing it is one of the most important things in the entire music industry. Yeah, um, we talked about uh, this earlier a little bit when we met up um, that uh, I, we men I mentioned having a mentor is, is can be really, really important. Maybe you can Tell us about, uh, did you have a mentor? How did you meet that person? How did he or she help? Maybe Jen? You. Uh, yeah. Um, person who stands out in my mind a lot is uh, my, my brother's friend. My brother works at Amazon in the US. And he, uh, he worked with a woman at the BBC in New York. And she, for whatever reason, she was just like, so nice to me. Like, so nice to me when we met and wanted to help me in every way possible when I moved to New York, like, didn't know me at all. Um, and you don't see that all the time in New York. Like, and you don't see that it's a genuine kindness. So I was like, all right, this woman wants to, she, she connected, with me with, connected me with a, a lot of different people. Um, and instead of hesitating, I was just like, okay, you, she would, um, she'd ask me to go for drinks in Bryant Park. We'd go for drinks and talk about the music industry. She didn't work in music, but she had a lot of friends in music. Um, and, and that was a really nice introduction to New York and it encouraged me to, to get out there and put myself out, out there. Um, which again, I think is like, is crucial. Like you just gotta make yourself uncomfortable, realize that like the more, um, job applications you submit, the higher your chances are in getting a job. You're only helping yourself. Like who cares about the 10 rejections you, you get because maybe you'll get one interview. Uh, but yeah, it was just. She was a big mentor of mine, her name's Caroline, and I uh, sent her postcards and like her baby photos. Okay. Annika, did you have a mentor? No, yes, I did. Uh, so it was the, the guy who contacted me um, via my, the MySpace, and um, it was Enno Arndt, one of our CEOs, uh, who, was, who founded Dogville, and he slowly showed me how to, um, how to book a festival and how to just like, um, how to look at bands and and so on and uh, there was one really um, good year for me, which was 2011, when I first went to uh, the Eurosonic Festival because um, she just uh, contacted me to all the agents which I was already writing with, but I didn't have any face to to look at them and didn't know who that really was and I, I, so I just saw them in person and we could talk about things and it was um, a really really good good year and. It helped to uh, to have a kind of stage in the industry. Yeah, so right. it's really important. How about you, Fabian? 
Uh, I met my mentors uh, at the university and um, because they encouraged me to read more and try, I don't know, to make um, sense of, of what I'm doing. And uh, especially, um, uh, sometimes th the problem, the th uh, theory sometimes is much more forward thinking than the, the actual uh, practice. And um, I think you need this mentors uh, in order to get the self-confident to do stuff um, differently than uh, what the older guys are telling you. And um, so, yeah, I think it's quite important. Yeah, I also found it to be very helpful to be able to always ask questions, no matter what, how, no matter how stupid or embarrassing they would be. My uh, friends would always try to uh, explain it to me. And yeah, I also, uh, for example, wrote to Martin Lund, uh, like uh, if he has some, uh, he's the founder of Skype, or one of the early investors of Skype, and um, it's quite easy. Sometimes it's, this makes a difference, and uh, yeah, we got some uh, jobs from him, and uh, that's how we got into the startup scene and got more jobs, and uh, yeah, it all started with uh, one message on uh, Facebook. Uh, yeah, absolutely. My mentor, probably not so much now because he's taken a step back, but was the guy who first employed me. He was actually a DJ and um, he had kind of given up. He'd had a baby and he got married and he'd given up the whole DJ circuit. And uh, he met someone who was quite wealthy who wanted to start an online music magazine. And because of that, I got involved in writing this online uh, music magazine with him. And he was just so positive and so encouraging. It, there wasn't a question that I couldn't ask. And if he didn't know the answer, he would go and speak to the other people that he had met when he was a DJ and find out the answer for me. If he was making more important um, decisions about the company, he would make sure we were involved so we understood. Like, he was absolutely brilliant. He still is, he's still a friend. And uh, that company actually closed. We ran out of money and uh, that was the end of that. But even when it closed, he was with me and he took me to meetings that he was having to make sure that anywhere that he went, I could go with him or, you know, he just looked after us constantly and still does now. He's brilliant. Okay. And then uh, maybe let's move on to the actual matter of, uh, of age. Uh, we found out that we had different views on how we um, feel comfortable with our age or even tell people uh, how old we are. Is there so... I think there's different different views on that. Maybe you can start. Do you like to to give your name to uh, to your age to people you start working with? Do you feel it matters to you, not just to them, but to you, to yourself? Yeah, um, yeah. We had mentioned this, uh, and I had said generally, I I don't like to say uh, I don't like to make it a an initial point because I feel like that's not. That's not just who I am. So um, I like to meet people based on whatever we're meeting about, or just if it's at a show, then we talk about the bands or we talk about music in general. Um, I, but I, when you apply for a job, maybe. Right, right we should mention that. Uh, it's interesting. In the US, you don't do that so much, but in, in Germany, you do. Um, and so for me, I, tr I try to avoid it. I just don't like making it a big point. Um, but if it comes up, I'll be proud about myself, and you know, I'll, I'll take pride in the fact that I am my age that I am. I'm not gonna hide it in that regard. But um, I don't, I don't make it a point. I don't feel like there's a big. Um, I don't feel the need to do that. Okay. How about you, Anika? So, um, actually, I don't really like speaking about my age. It's not <laughs> like that. I go to uh, to someone and say, "Hi, I'm Anika. I'm 23. I'm working in the music industry for seven years now." So because. So why should I do that? But of course, uh, sometimes it happens that um, I see an agent. I uh, was talking about uh, well, things uh, with him about for years. So we know each other actually for years, but he didn't meet me. So and then he says, "Oh wow! So how old are you actually?" And then of course uh, it's a, a theme. But um, in general, I wouldn't um, point it out much. Okay. So how about you? Do you feel comfortable talking about your age? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I don't go around with a badge with my age on it, but I'm more than happy to talk about it. And I feel, I feel really proud of what I've achieved and what I do. And I think it's more common now to be under 30 in the music industry. But certainly when I started as a music journalist at like 18, 19, there weren't a lot of us around. There certainly weren't a lot of females um, under the age of 25. And I, d I feel proud of everything that I've achieved and the fact that 
even when you're in a room with people that have 20, 30 years experience on you, you can still hold your own and you still understand and you can bring new things to the table. And I think it's important perhaps for the older music generation to understand that we're not just kids messing around. Like we, we have ideas and we have points that need to be taken seriously as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I think it's uh, important to mention that no one hires you because uh, you're young or something like that. It's mostly because you do or you did something uh, differently and that was successful. And um, that's why it's so crucial to do some stuff and, and put it out there on a website or whatever. And then people, um, yeah, they, they got to know you through your work and not um, through your age or a perfect CV. Or But uh, did your age ever matter while while working at a company, were you ever the youngest person? Did you feel there was a difference in your approach or the way you worked? Did you ever have to like prove yourself because yeah. of your young age? Uh, yeah, and in the advertising industry, not so much, but when talking to clients nowadays, sometimes it's uh, hard because they believe it's um, we are young and it's our hobby and uh, you love what you do, so uh, it's quite hard to negotiate sometimes the contracts in terms of money. Um, so yeah, this is sometimes where you have to say, hey, okay, we are young, and but you know, on the other hand, um, we will deliver or exceed your expectations, so uh, give us more money. <laughs> okay. How is, it, how is it with your companies? Uh, I'm sure there's a few older people at Indigo uh, are you the youngest in the company? Or? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, saying. Yeah, I, I think I think it's safe to say that I I think wait. Well, we have um we have a warehouse where uh the the warehouse Indigo does physical and digital distribution, um and, and I think they're I'm not sh like actually this is a nice nice point that I'm realizing here. I don't know everyone's age, um and I don't feel like I can say this person is this age and this person's not. But I think I'm the youngest person there. Um, and I've discussed that with my boss, so I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's nice, it's, it's, nice uh, it's nice to be able to compare and contrast. And if people, like I work with a lot of streaming um, platforms, if people I work with don't know much about uh, some of the streaming platforms, it's nice to, to talk about them and, and show them how things work. And then they can tell me something about the physical world that I don't know, um, physical distribution world. So your age does matter sometimes. Maybe you have just a different approach on technology as they do because you're younger and they have maybe they're more used to the physical side because that's what they've been doing for the... I think that's safe to say that. Um, and then where we bond is that I love vinyl and they love vinyl. So that's all right. Um, and then some of, the, some of the people I work with like streaming anyway, but I think, I think technology and just like the evolution of music and, and how things are going today, I think, I mean, it, statistics show that younger people, there's like a, a larger number of, of younger people using streaming services. It's not something you have to ponder about. It's something that's a proven fact. So yeah, I, I guess that, that that is a difference. Yeah. How is it at Dockwell? Are you the youngest person working there? Yes, I am. I am still am. <laughs> but um, it never had been a, re a real problem. It was um, always a good thing to work there and to, uh, to um, know, see what the people know there and uh, so to just react on it and uh, bring new, new kind of uh, thoughts there and um, so it was a problem to be, uh, be uh, under, to be under 21 in the US <laughs> actually, okay. so uh, at South by Southwest, but um, beside that I really never had a real problem with this. But you did mention that uh, actually some of your interns sometimes are even older than you are. How does yeah, that feel? Most, yeah, mostly they, uh, they are older because they finished their studies and then are doing internships. And um, it never felt like a problem, but uh, just had like two times. It was, it was, sorry. It was uh, like, um, okay, um, you can learn from me even if I'm younger than you. So just think about it. Okay. Yes, yeah, for me, I uh, once worked at a company where the, I was the youngest and the second youngest person was, I think, seven or eight years older than me. So, and that definitely was, was an issue. I actually, it's not like they really made fun of me, but I was always considered to be the young person and uh, the, like the, the young kid in the company. And sometimes that I had the feeling that I have to prove myself or 
that I maybe didn't have that much experience. And I also felt that um, they've, they've, they have this experience, they have been doing this for quite a while, and that it's maybe sometimes hard for them to, to share tasks, give out new tasks, and be that flexible. So, uh, and, uh, so I think in that context, it did actually matter to me. So I, so I have experienced that an age gap can be, can be not a problem, but an issue. But I also believe that it's a lot of uh, freedom you have when you're young in a company. Uh, when I started in advertising, for example, I did a, um, I just called the clients in a pitch and, and did stuff like this. And the older guys w went crazy, like, what is this guy doing? But because I was so young, they said, like, okay, it's okay. <laughs> so I think you should make uh, use of this freedom. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then another question um, about education. I mean, I think there's different ways you can enter the this uh, field, be it through studies or internships or anything. Did did anyone here study something that's directly related to what you're doing now? Um, yeah, like I said at the beginning, I always knew I wanted to be a journalist. Like every exam that you have to take up until being an adult was always English. Uh, media studies. I did some um, like IT stuff because obviously you can see that the world's turning digital. So I did some of that. Um, and then at university, I did a journalism degree. Um, I I think I was just really lucky in the way that, like I said, I knew what I wanted to do, so I could be really focused. And I had those opportunities. And while I was studying, I did a lot of internships, unpaid and paid, uh, just to get out there and and to kind of work out which area I wanted to be in. Are they, do you think it was helpful even doing those unpaid internships? Yeah, massively. I, I, it's a shame that they're unpaid, but if you want to get ahead, you, you have to do it. You have to find a way until the law changes, until there's some, some judicial, like, almighty input. It has to be done, and you have to find a way around it. When I was at university, I worked constantly. Sometimes I worked two jobs, and then I studied, and then I did my internships. You just... You just have to suck it up. If it's if you if it's what you want to do, then you'll find time. I think is always the fact. Yeah. How about you, Jen? Did you study anything, or yeah? I studied journalism in German. Um, things that. <laughs> well, I'm working in Germany now, so that helped. Uh, but journalism then again like helped me make my way through music people um, in the music world. Just working in music journalism, uh, but it, I don't. I'm not a music journal. I'm not a journalist right now. I'm not like a German specialist or anything. But both, you know, it, it was related. It, it helped me on my way, I'd say. Annika, how is it for you? Um, I'm still studying, so that's actually more an issue than uh, than being in the music industry and being young. Um, what what, what are you studying? Uh, cultural sciences. Okay. And um, so it's why it's an issue. It's an issue because. Um, People at the university, they look at me as a student, not as being one working already. And uh, so and if the people here, I'm that young in the music industry, um, and I would point out, okay, I'm still studying, it would be strange. So this is more complicated, actually. But it is possible to do both. It is possible if you um, just see how to manage it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm also still studying. My, I'm writing my bachelor thesis right now. My de deadline is on uh, Monday, and uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I st uh, I'm studying communication in business and social context uh, here at the University of the Arts in Berlin. And um, for me, it it helped to structure my thinking. Um, and I also did a couple of internships, and I think it's. Uh, internships are important uh, as long as you learn something and you must be willing to go to the people and annoy them and get on their nerves uh, to get the information trying to understand how the business works and the system and then you are able to change it otherwise you will always be the guy like in a conversation with an older guy you will always um, argue I don't know, from his experience like hey you don't understand the business or this is how it goes um, but the minute you understand it then you can change it and you have a better discussion with uh, even you know, older people yeah, and I also feel that internships have a very low entry level like it's very easy to access this yeah. to, to get a, yeah, a foot in the in the field without I mean 
you still have to apply most of the times, but it's very s easy to get them. Yeah. But I would, I would, sorry, I would focus on uh, the people and trying to get to know the people before that. Yeah, yeah th th that's exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say we're talking a lot about working hard and dedicating your life and stuff like that. But I think the social aspect is really important as well. Get to know these people as people, you know? Like, you might end up working next to them, but they could end up being some of your best friends. I still talk to a lot of people that... I did internships for, and if you get to know them on that level, they're going to be a lot more open to wanting to help you because they care about you as a person as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as for me, I oh sorry, no, did I you want? I agree. Okay. I concur. <laughs> yeah. As for me, uh, I don't have any uh, formal uh, education in the music uh, industry. I studied political science, um, but I don't think uh, that. I'm not sure if, I ever, if I'm ever going to do anything in that field, but it was just kind of nice to have that as kind of a, as a backing or like a plan B maybe. But um, I think all of what I've learned, I've learned through experience. Um, and um, I also found internships, yeah, to be quite important. I think I only did two, but they were very, very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I think I had mentioned... Um I didn't say anything about internships, but I think uh, they are really, really important. And I didn't come from um, like a wealthy family, but we always found ways, uh, my parents and I, we found ways to make it work even when the, the internships I did were unpaid. And some of those summers were like really not fun. Um, like working nights at a grocery store in Massachusetts. It was just like, it was really not fun. But then again, I think it's that kind of work ethic that will get you the job that you want. Um, yeah, and I, I interned at Vice in Berlin and had to save up for like a long time to do that because it wasn't paid at the time. That was like, that was really hard. Like I was living on savings. I wasn't going out. I, I, lived, in, I lived in Berlin for three and a half months. I, didn't, I went out like three times. Like, but do but you th still think it was helpful or do you regret doing that? Ah, I don't regret it. I, I was doing a marketing internship. I, I loved doing music journalism at the time, so I got to know the music journalism department. I still write for Vice and Noisy sometimes. Um, it helped me a lot with connections. The experience helped me in general. It really um, shaped, like it, it made me a lot more flexible. I didn't honestly love it that much, but it, it roughed me up a little bit so that I was ready for the next thing. So that, like the next time, if it was gonna suck, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna let it. Like I knew where my boundaries were. Uh, I hope there's no one, well, I don't care. I'm still friends with them, so it's fine. But um, but it was it wasn't it wasn't that fun. I just have to say, like you're gonna. I mean, I don't know who's who's in this room today, but I had some really shitty internships, and that's just the matter. That's just how it goes. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to add that um, it's. I think it's quite important to develop a point of view uh, during internship because um, otherwise you end up being just this guy who's doing or executing this job, and I think you must. Uh, make people to pay for your opinion at the end. So you're much more than just this guy who's executing this, but they pay you um, more because you have an opinion and or an attitude. And uh, f for them, that's the, yeah, that's how they're willing to pay you more. I was going to say, for what it's worth, uh, my first ever journalism paycheck came from an unpaid internship where it was unpaid for three months and I ended up not leaving for about a year. So even if it's unpaid, then you never know what's going to come out at the end of it. Nice. And then also one um, issue that came up when we prepared this panel was um, the, the uh, issue of gender, that uh, you mentioned that it is even harder for um, young women in the music industry. Is that true? Oh, do you want to go first? I can mm, so well, um, I don't know if it's harder, but... Yeah, it is actually. <laughs> yeah, touchy subject. It's, um, it's um, I'm, I'm actually just dealing with men, kind of. So they're just, I think I know five female booking agents. The rest is men. So that's, um, I don't know if they deal with me differently, but um, it's an issue that there are still really much money, many men, only men. Yeah, I think it's a male-dominated industry. Am I, I wrong? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that's pretty much the case. So, is it is it changing in Germany? Because I think in the UK, 
it's it's completely changing. At Indigo, it's not that way. Um, so I think it's changing. Yeah. So in, <laughs> the there's a lot of young women. In our company, yeah. they are almost just um, women. So um, they are our CEOs. They are men, <laughs> of course. But the rest, um, they are women. So it's changing. What, what's your opinion on this? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm a little bit different because I used to work on consumer magazines. So I used to be really public facing and now Record of the Day is quite an industry facing uh, publication. So this is for the last four years is the first time I've really been involved directly on the industry side of things rather than sort of like the artist side of things. Um, and it was quite a shock. I felt more like I had to prove myself that I wasn't just some small girl trying something out for a while. And it, I did feel those barriers and I think there were a lot of older men who were gatekeepers who were controlling the business side of it. And you have to be quite a strong personality to be able to walk into a room of older men and be able to sit down and have your point, which I think I said before. Uh, which is again one of the reasons why myself and a few other people are involved in the Young Guns Network because there are now a lot of women who want to be agents, who want to be managers and can do it, you know, they're insanely organised, they're tenacious, they're smart people, but they just need that first step to meet other people in that place rather than going into somewhere where everyone's older than them and they're older and they have more experience so they can talk about things that perhaps the younger people can't because they weren't there to live it and just having other people around you who are in the same boat but still have great ideas is insanely important. Okay. And then uh, one other thing maybe to either of you, uh, Fabian, uh, what made you start your own business? When, did, when do you think you were ready to do your own thing and why? Uh, when you're um, totally uh, frustrated uh, by the status quo and you don't have the people at the top who uh, think and act different than the industry. Um, and nowadays it's quite uh, easy and, and cheap to start a company. So um, it depends. The frustration must be there some, some way and uh, then the rest follows. <laughs> but again, it's e you, have to f you have to develop a vision, so uh, no one will hire you or give you money because you're, uh, you started your own agency or your own company. You need to have a vision that is different from the uh, establishment. And um, then you need to find the people or building this this ecosystem around you and it's also what you see with a lot of uh, successful directors they work with the same um, DOPs and actors and uh, production companies and uh, when you're young it's much easier to start your own business because you don't have to uh, pay a house you don't have kids mostly and uh, so yeah uh, it's I can encourage everyone to do it <laughs> Do you have anything to add to that, Liz? Um, you, you were pretty concise. Um, I think that the whole idea is just do it. Just get on with it. If you've got an idea from a journalism point of view, if you've got an idea for a feature in your favorite magazine, just email the editor. Just, just pitch your idea. Just get on with it. Yeah. And for me, it was... Uh, I think the more experience you have, the more confident you get in starting to do your own thing and not just work for other people. I think that helped me. I mean, I wouldn't have had the, I don't know, serious idea, idea to maybe start a label or even, yeah, book bands or something. It's just at a point I kind of, I think I know, I think I know like how to do it and then I just started. This is a, a matter of confidence, I think. I think learning from your mistakes is really important as well. Don't be afraid that you are going to fuck up. So yeah, everyone yeah, will be making a lot yeah, of mistakes. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And just, and just take that mistake and don't do it again. I think you have to make mistakes. Okay, um, are there any questions from the audience already? Yes? Uh, can you maybe pass the microphone, is it <laughs> possible? Or you can just come yeah, in maybe you can to the come front. Yeah, maybe you can come a bit closer, because I <laughs> can't really handle the cable. I have a question regarding like, uh, to the ladies. So how are you dealing with like, being treated dif differently as a vo woman in like, situations? So we know there's a lack of women right now still ongoing, but everyone says like, yeah, I feel that a difference, blah, 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 but what is that actually and how do you deal with that? 
examples maybe. Yeah, I would say so too. Yeah, just just ignore it. Don't let it be an issue. If it's if it's anyone's issue, then it's their issue, not yours. And if you're confident in what you can do, just just do it. So don't just don't be afra afraid. Just yeah. deal how you are and be seriously what you know and what you how how to show it to the people. Yeah, I guess um, going into it with a perspective that you don't have anything to prove and that you have something to offer. Um, in uh, one particular circumstance at one of my last jobs, I just felt like severely outnumbered. I was the only woman in the office. And I always like made it, I was like, oh God, it's like they're always talking about guy stuff. Like they're, they're always, like they always. And I was like, no, wait, how about I get in, get, I just get into it. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself in there. And then I, I started bonding with them. Like I would go out on their, their drink breaks and I, like, I would have did all the crap that they would do. And then we, we ended up getting, getting along and like, I, I stopped looking at it from that perspective, like I was being challenged all the time, and then I wanted to challenge them. Just like putting yourself out there. I, I had a really similar experience, actually. Do you have the men's magazine FHM here? Yeah, I worked at FHM for um, a little while when I was at university, which is obviously all boys. And you just throw yourself in, just get involved. Like they had a table football thing in there, and you just go and play table football and drink beer with them and just get on with it. But there is my problem, and then I adapt to a man's world, and I adapt, I bond with the guys, I, I, I just ignore when they insult me, or don't or listen to me because my voice is maybe a little bit um, more quiet, or like all the situation, asking three times for sales statements, and not only one, you know, all these things, and so if I, then I become loud, and then I become like a buddy, and then I'm maybe not myself anymore, that's my kind of... I think you should always be yourself. Everyone should always be themselves, whatever that self is. Uh, and no one should be insulting you anyway. <laughs> you yeah. shouldn't be at that company. Standing up for yourself and having confidence, generally a good thing. And the more powerful you get, the more people you can employ and you can make yourself a little woman army. But yeah, I don't know, it's tough complicated, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? All right, uh, then uh, maybe just to wrap this up, is there any more advice you would give to young people starting to work in the music field? What I'd would you say to? I'd say experience as many pockets of the music industry as you can, because you might think that you want to be a manager, but then you learn about a different role, especially at the moment with technology evolving and there's so many new roles becoming available. Absolutely. Take agree, as yeah. many different internships and as many different parts of a label or a business as you can so you can understand what you want to do. Yeah, try to get a, an overview of the different things and uh, ways to work. I would say uh, make your opinion matter in a way. So develop a point of view and make people uh, listen to you and then you're standing out of the crowd. Okay. How about you? Uh, yeah, I, um, I think if you're in music or in, in some kind of entertainment field, I think self-branding, uh, having some kind of a website, a, something that represents you and what you do is really important. But then also, again, like, I was trying to remember what would be helpful for me if I were, like, listening to something like this. And um, I remember it was really hard going from the internship to the job phase and, like, finding a job that was, like, full-time, something I enjoyed. And what was... What I wish I knew then was like, it really is just a matter of applying to so much, just apply and apply and apply, but take each application very seriously, write genuine cover letters, like actually give a crap, because if you don't give, a, if you don't put in 100%, why do you expect someone else to care? Like, so I think, I think that was it, just like increasing your chances, putting yourself out there, applying. I spent like an hour um, a day for a couple months um, applying for jobs, and it's just, it can be really exhausting, but it's just a matter of what happens, like it's just part of the process. Anything you would like to add, Anika? I would say, um, as already said, don't be afraid of anything. Just try to do it, be open, and got to know people. And yeah. Talk to people, yeah. that would be my advice. Get to know as many people as possible. Go to shows, go to events, talk to everyone. Uh, I've, this is how pretty much I got all of my jobs. I've only applied to, I think, one or two jobs. There were, people just asked me if I, if I wanted to do it. And if I didn't know these people, I wouldn't have been offered the jobs. So, yeah. Uh, and be useful. So, 
if you ask someone, give them something back in a way. Okay. No more questions? No? Then I think uh, that's it. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you. sticking around.